Today we're going to have a formal discussion on congruence mappings and XY LAN. Congruence mappings and XY LAN. With our Wikistick projects, we have done some congruence mappings already in XY LAN. So this is not going to be a difficult lesson. It's good for us to know that a congruence mapping is also called a congruence transformation. We are transforming one object to another location, basically. There are three types of congruence mappings that we're going to talk about. These mappings, because they are congruence mappings, will preserve the size and shape of the object being transformed. The three basic types of congruence mappings are reflections. And when we reflect something, we always reflect it across a certain line. The second type of congruence transformation is a translation. And when we translate something, we will translate it a certain direction with a certain distance. The third type of transformation in X, Y land that we're going to see an example of today is a rotation. And a rotation, we always rotate a certain degree about a certain point. So those are our three types. Let's begin by looking at a very simple reflection and here we're going to reflect triangle ABC. We have triangle ABC. And we're going to reflect triangle ABC across the line Y equals negative 1. So it's a good idea. Let's use our knowledge about lines and graph the line Y equals negative 1. I'm going to graph it in green. And there it is. That's the line y equals negative 1. Let's label it y equals negative 1. And now I'm simply going to reflect this about the line y equals negative 1. And it's easy to do. The first thing I need to understand is that if I'm going to reflect point A, I'm going to do this point by point and then just connect the dots. So the first thing I need to do is I'm going to draw a perpendicular line to y equals negative 1 that goes through point A. I wanted that, I need that yellow. Let's go yellow. And I need a perpendicular line from point B to y equals negative 1. And you notice I am extending those lines, and there'll be a reason. Whoops, grab the wrong guy. And it looks like I need to grab my drawing and slide it there a little bit. There we go. Slide it a little bit that way. I need one more perpendicular line, and this is going to be going through point C. Make sure I have the line tool selected. And I'm going to pull that line over just a little bit. I'm going to pull that line over a little bit. Now we're lined up pretty nice. No pun intended. I want to find these reflected points. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to reflect A about the line Y equals negative 1. I simply count on this perpendicular line how far away I am. It looks like I am 1, 2, 3, 4 points away from y equals negative 1. So I go across y equals negative 1 for units. 1, 2, 3, 4. And I will label A prime. A prime is the mapping. A maps to A prime. This is new notation, but don't worry about it. It's just another way to name a vertex. I'm going to do the same with point C. I'm going to count how far it is from y equals negative 1. Go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 
And so I'm going to go down below y equals negative 1 on the perpendicular line, 7 units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's going to give us C prime. In like manner, I'm going to reflect point B along the perpendicular line across y equals negative 1. Let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I go below y equals negative 1, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's going to be B prime. The last thing, so I've reflected the most important points on this triangle ABC. What I want to do is now is make it triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. And I simply do that by connecting those dots. Let's go to the line tool. Let's make the line tool red. And let's connect those dots. And now I can see that triangle ABC is a reflection of triangle ABC about the line y equals negative 1. We could if we would like to. We don't need these perpendicular lines anymore. And we can slide them out of the way if we want. Now we can see that this is a nice reflection. Triangle A prime, B prime, C prime is a nice reflection of triangle ABC across the line y equals negative 1. Let's go to my next example, and we're going to talk about translating a triangle down 4 and left 3. So far in Wikistick land, we've only translated triangles to the right or to the left. This time, we're going to translate this triangle, ABC, specifically down 4 and left 3. The translations are probably the easiest of the three trans congruence transformations that we're going to do. So what we're going to simply do is take point A, and again we're going to do it point by point, then connect the dots. But I'm going to take point A and translate it down 4, left 3. Easy enough. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. And this is my new A prime. Okay, good point. Do the same with point B. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3. That's going to be B prime. Do the same with C. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3. And that baby is C prime. Now I want to make sure that I translate all the points in triangle ABC. So I simply have to connect the dots. Let's make sure that my red line is on, and it is. And as I said before, translations I don't know what happened there. Translations are the easiest of the three congruence mappings. And now you see that I have translated this rascal truly down 4 over 3. All right, let's go to probably the most difficult example, and this is a rotation. Here we're going to rotate. Again, we're going to rotate our old friend, triangle ABC. And we're going to rotate it specifically 90 degrees about point, about the point negative 1, 1. And we're going to call that point. We need to label that point. Let's sketch him. Like we could do him in yellow. And let's call him a letter. Let's call him for right now. O. And O is where we're going to rotate that triangle about. The other thing I need to know is that in XY land, 90 degrees
is a counterclockwise movement. We'll learn more about that next semester. It's enough for us to know that when we go a positive 90 degrees, we are going to move counterclockwise 90 degrees. So let's get started. And it's nice. I specifically chose 90 degrees because we know how to find perpendicular segments in XY land. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch a small yellow line. Make sure that I'm on yellow from A to 2.0, the center of rotation. And the first thing I'm going to do, you probably have figured it out, is rotate point A 90 degrees counterclockwise from point O. Well, it's going to be pretty easy. All I need to do is make a perpendicular line over here, a perpendicular line to OA. And here, so I'm going to, so that I know what I'm doing, the slope of segment OA, find the slope of segment OA. The slope of segment OA is up to over 3. So this is going to be 2, 3. And what I need to do is find the slope now of OA prime. And A prime is the guy that we want to find. And what I want to realize or recognize is that if I want this rotation to be 90 degrees, these segments are going to be perpendicular. And if they're going to be perpendicular, then this slope has to be negative 3 halves because 2 thirds times negative 3 halves is negative 1. This is a nice review of perpendicular lines. So I want that slope to be negative 3 halves. And here I'm going to simply count. Get my red pen out. So I want to go down 3 and over 2, but I want the guy to be somewhere over here, so I'm going to go up 3, 1, 2, 3, and back 2. And that's my A prime. And if I sketched a little yellow line, I could see that, yes, indeed, this is a 90 degree angle. So I have rotated 90 degrees. But I only have A prime. So I'm going to clean my diagram up, and I'm going to do the same method to find B prime. So I'm going to erase some lines here, and I'm going to Get rid of these lines. And I need to do the same process to rotate B. So let's go and make a yellow line and make this segment OB. And what do I need to do? Yes, you're right. I need to find the slope of OB, of this segment OB. And the slope of segment OB, let's use stick man, is 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, up 3 and over 7. Again, my objective is to find B prime. And I want the slope of OB prime to be perpendicular to the slope of OB, so this slope is going to have to be negative 3 sevenths. Pardon me, negative 7 thirds. Wrote the wrong thing and said the right thing. No, I wrote the right thing and said the wrong thing. Either way, I want that slope to be negative 7 thirds. And I want to use these same numbers because they will preserve the distance. So let's get on a treasure hunt and find B prime. Again, I'm going to know that it's going to be perpendicular and it's going to be a rotation counterclockwise. What are we going to do? Go up 7 and back 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3. And that is going to be B prime. 
And again, if I sketch my line, this is something that we wouldn't have to do, but I just like to sketch that so I can show you that indeed, indeed, this is a 90 degree, and indeed I rotated B counterclockwise 90 degrees. So the last thing I need to do now is rotate point C. So let's erase this and get these lines out of there because we're going to need to create two more lines. And while you're doing this on your assignment, you want to make sure that you do your rotation lines very, very light. I think I erased my point. I think I did. Okay, so let's find C prime. Step number one, create a light line from O to C. Step two, let's find the slope of OC. The slope of OC, let's can you stick, man? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, that slope is five over one. And note, that does equal 1. That slope is 1. So it's going to be easy to find the slope of OC prime is going to be negative 1. But I have to write it as negative 5 over 5 to preserve the distance. OC prime has to be the same distance as OC. These congruence transformations preserve lots of distance. We're going to preserve the size and, size and shape of the triangle ABC, but also each point will be the same distance the original point or the pre-image point is from the point of rotation. So let's go on a scavenger hunt and find C prime. I'm going to go up 5 and back 5. Should be easy enough. Let's do it again in red. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oh, and I bet you didn't realize that C prime would be over there. What I'm going to do now, and I may have to hide my A prime for a moment, I'm going to connect these dots. And as I did before, I'm going to connect them in red lines. So I have my mapped triangle in red. Oh, that goes right there. Grab the wrong thing. Sorry. And I'm going to have to just erase a prime there. Put him down here. And there's that rotation. There's triangle. A prime, B prime, C prime that results from rotating triangle ABC 90 degrees about the point negative 1, 1. Let's just pull him out of there and get a nice look at what's going on. So I can see every point of that triangle was rotated 90 degrees. Fairly straightforward. This part of the video, you may have to pause and rewind. So let's review what we have done. We've rotated objects counterclockwise about a point. On the assignment, we're going to stick always to 90 degree rotations. Next semester, we'll try some rotations of different degrees in flatland. The second thing we did we translated down 4 and left to 3. So translations, down a number and right or left a number, up or down, right or left, these are going to be fairly straightforward. This is going to be an easy topic. And I think that the reflections will also be an easy topic, where we reflect something about either a horizontal line or a vertical line. Thank you. Have a great day.